forgot about this record. Classic Lost 45 by Billy Squire. I remember watching a video on MTV. Had to refresh my memory of it watching the video again on YouTube a few minutes ago. Billy Squire, Don't Say You Love Me, at debuting at number 35 on my fancy playlist. The album, the album was called uh, Here and Now. Debuting at number 35 on my fancy playlist, July 30th, 1989. Boy, he's fetching some great hooks on this record. Some of the uh, juicy guitar riffs on this song, too. Uh, don't This classic Billy Squire, a little bit of that classic rock. Maybe a flurry or two of hair metal, uh, like Def Leppard. Sort of influenced by Def Leppard. As a matter of fact, I came across some information that on the uh, Emotions Tour, Motions and Motions Tour or something like that in the early 80s. Def, uh, well, Billy Squire, he brought Def Leppard to the States, introduced them to the United States on tour when, after they came out with that Pyromania album. Billy Squire, I tell you what, now, it, it, it did seem like Billy Squire just came out of nowhere in the summer of 1981 when he came out with The Stroke. A lot of people thought, man, this guy's a spring chicken. But to those who know, Billy Squire had been at it for a long time. He was not an overnight sensation. He had been playing in bands for years. Graduated from high school, 1968. And after he graduated, he's from Massachusetts. He played, the, he played this club in Boston, the Psychedelic Supermarket. Started playing uh, gigs there at the Psychedelic Supermarket. Boy, that's a tripping sounding place right there. <laughs> like uh, maybe Berkeley or something like that. It's like a psychedelic su supermarket. He saw, he saw Eric Clapton perform to Eric Cream. A year later, 1969, well, Billy Squire, he, he, he got to it. Running on that rock and roll adrenaline, he formed a band called Magic Terry and the Universe. That's pretty psychedelic right there. Reminds me of those those psychedelic groups like the Blues Magoos, the Seeds, and the Electric Watch, but what well, yeah, the Electric Watch Band, the Magic Mushrooms. <laughs> Around this time, well actually a little bit after that, 1971, Billy Squire attended the Berkeley School of Music to become a music teacher. But that rock and roll bug was eating away at him. Formed another band called Kicks. Jerry Nolan who later become a member of the New York Dolls. He was a drummer for that band, Kicks. Then came Sidewinder, another band that Billy Squire was in. Boy, I tell you, he was kicking it in the 70s. He got his first taste, a glimmer of what was to come. Billy Squire did when he formed a band called Piper, 1976. They released two albums, one of those albums, self-titled, Piper, critically acclaimed by Circus Magazine. And let me read you, uh, this is near an exact quote. I want to do this right. This is what Circus Magazine said about the album, Piper. Billy Squire's band from Circus Magazine, quote, Greatest debut album ever produced by a U.S. rock band or American rock band, unquote. May not be the exact quote, but it's very close to it. Boy, that's heady stuff for a guy who's been at it for 10 years. He must have read the review and thought, man, we're on the move. And indeed they were. Piper opened for Kiss in 1977, including playing two shows, sold-out shows at Madison Square Garden. Opening for Kiss, 1977. But then Billy Squire, he wings it, goes solo. Signs a deal with Capitol Records. The Tale of the Tape, released in 1980, his first album, didn't do much, but then there was Don't Say No. And that was the that was the charm. That sent him, that that sent Bill Squire hurtling into platinum territory, platinum stratosphere, platinum orbit. Stroke in the summer of 1981, and then there was In the Dark, In the Dark in the fall of 81. It was commercial, but I'd say it was even harder than The Stroke. Listen to that, listen to that guitar solo, the squalling guitars. It must have been multi-tracked. I mean, just 
a hurricane, a sonic hurricane of guitars with a nice melody to it, but got some bite. I'm rocking. And then there was a song that after that that was even more that was more commercial sounding, but didn't do as well. My kind of lover in the winter of '81 and '82 didn't quite make top 40 though. Peaked at 45. The album after that, Emotions in Motion, and Everybody Wants You Another. Well, it, it I don't think it made top 30, but don't get fooled by these chart positions, uh, because even if a song went to number 30 or 32. Well, it got played a lot. Everybody wants you got played a lot. A lot of people like that record. I remember hearing the song on WLS in Chicago. Sign of Life came in 1984. And, uh, oh, was it Rock Me Tonight? That was actually his biggest record in 1984. And then there was that controversial video where he was uh, in the bedroom kind of jumping around in a pink T-shirt. And it's not clear to me if it was his idea. Probably not his idea, but... He thought, I read somewhere that he thought that it hurt his career. And a lot of people thought that his career went spiraling downward afterward. But Martha Quinn, a VJ of MTV, she takes issue with that. She said that she does not recall the video being poorly received. She thought it was a super fun video, and I agree with her. It's a, it's a fun video, it's a fun record, it's a great rock and roll record, but that would be his last top 40 hit. 1989, we come to that album, I wrote it down, Here and Now. Here and Now sold about 300,000 copies, but that record, uh, Don't Say You Love Me, went to number 58 on Billboard's Hot 100. Well, hey, at least it charted on Billboard's Hot 100, Hot 100. it deserved to. I mean, I'd put this up there almost with a White Snake record, Def Leppard. He was rocking on this song. Went to number four on the mainstream rock tracks, charts, and Billboard. And boy, he's doing a lot better on my fantasy playlist than he did on Billboard's Hot 100, making a debut at number 35. Yes, I was, I was on with this record. Billy Squire, Don't Say You Love Me. Making his debut at 35 on my fancy playlist, July 30th, 1989.